Jenkins, uh, Brooke Jenkins was appointed as San Francisco DA after voters overwhelmingly recalled Chesa Boudin back in May. She is running in the November election to keep her seat. Yeah, this is one of the policy changes that she has right. announced since getting into office. Now, some are skeptical about Jenkins' new approach to fentanyl dealers, including the Public Defender's Office. Anita Naba is managing attorney in the felony unit at the Public Defender's Office. Uh, thank you so much for being here. As we all know, the city is dealing with a drug overdose epidemic. Why is why is this not a good strategy? I mean, it's being used successfully elsewhere. Uh, th thank you for having me. And you know, I I would I would beg to differ about that last comment. It has not been really used successfully elsewhere. And there there are a lot of states that have pursued this failed experiment and are showing that these types of prosecutions don't deter. They do not reduce the demand for drugs, and they do not increase public safety. Um, the prosecutions aren't going to target the kingpins. The high level dealers, what we're seeing in our courts day in, day out, are the same um, vulnerable, poor black and brown community members uh, that are relatively low subsistence dealers um, that are being prosecuted. I understand you, you also believe that, that a policy shift like this is likely to have some unintended consequences, including potentially deterring people from, from helping others who might need medical attention. Explain what your concerns are. Yes, I mean, I think that's true. I think that, you know, the, the idea that we're going to target high level dealers that are multiple levels removed from um, the person that is actually overdosing um, is just it's just unrealistic. And they know it's not true. Most likely the the people that get targeted are the people that are with the addicted person when they are sick and when they are overdosing and who are not going to want to call 911 or take someone to the hospital if they know that it's going to result in police scrutiny and police involvement. Okay, but what about this idea that if you have someone who is selling fentanyl, those that look like candy or what have you to, to a teenager and that teenager dies, what is the, the, the problem with going after the person who sold that teenager that deadly lace drug? You know, it, it is. I've I have seen the the stories in the news, and I am I am the mother of two young children, and I think it's absolutely tragic, um, the the deaths that we have seen. Uh, but what what we're seeing in the interim district attorney's policies is not a policy that's going to realistically target some of the extreme cases that we're following in the news. What we're watching every day in our courts is vulnerable indigent communities, black and brown people in the tenderloin who are largely selling drugs as subsistence dealers, some of them supporting their own drug habits, um, who, who are being caught up, over-criminalized, and over-prosecuted in our system. Obviously, you, you understand the court system better than most of us do. From, from a practical standpoint here, how challenging is it going to be to actually prove that uh, this drug dealer sold the drugs that led to this person dying from an overdose? Do, do you? I think it's going to be extraordinarily yeah. challenging to, to make that leap of connections. It's extremely attenuated, you know, the, the types of cases that we see at 850 Bryan on a day-to-day -day basis. And I, I think that it's political grandstanding. And while people in our communities want answers and want solutions, our clients who are dying on the streets want solutions, this is not where we should be targeting our very, very scarce resources. Okay, before I let you go, so you don't think that this would be enough of a threat to deter any sort of criminal behavior and prohibit those from dealing fentanyl? I don't, and I, I think that this is, we know this from 50 years of, of living through the war on drugs, that ratcheting up penalties, escalating uh, jail time and prosecution has not been an effective deterrent to ending the public health crisis that we see in our streets. All right, we have to leave the conversation there. We appreciate your time. Anita Naba, managing attorney in the felony unit at the Public Defender's Office in San Francisco. Thank you for taking the time. Thank you.